Right. His next problem is the problem of moral absolutes, right? He says, there's still another problem, problem of moral absolutes. He says, we can talk about simple matters of morality, why anybody should you know, be decent to another person or why uh, we shouldn't pillage or rape or murder and all those sorts of things. But he says, one way to see this is uh, the example that he used in this debate that you referenced earlier with uh, Dr. Stein. Right? Suppose he says, I was to take out a gun in this debate, right, with Stein, and say, here's how we'll settle the debate question. So he pulls a gun out on the guy. Give me an argument, he asked him, as to why I shouldn't shoot you. And he, Bonson says he has two ways to respond. Right? <laughs> what are the ways to respond? How do you respond to that? <laughs> My own gun. Bigger gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he says that one is to give no argument at all, but instead say, well, there aren't any moral absolutes. And if there aren't, uh, if there are no moral absolutes, then it's perfectly all right to win a debate by shooting your opponent. And uh, so you get a gun, right? You get your own gun, a bigger right, gun. Right? right. Yeah. This is how we solve disputes. We have 10 paces, turn, bang. All right. Uh, we're, 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 we're going with the, uh, the, the mindset that behaviorism is, is the best uh, uh, psychology. So that, that's, that's how you win. Might makes right. Uh, we, we, we control the textbooks. And so it's not about truth. It's about might and power. Okay. But if he thinks it's wrong to try and win a debate in that way, if he wants to say that murder is immoral, then he's going to have to tell me that there's more to this universe than just matter. He's going to have to appeal to something beyond the material cosmos. Listen, ideas, well, ideas are, are esoteric uh, things that your, your brain in the, in the vat of you is just trying to, to get me to on your side to, to allow you to have more things on, on your side. But but I don't I don't want that I I, I want uh, I I want to uh, I exist uh, uh, completely independent from you and so uh, I'm going to just try and think of uh, this morality. Well, the, m this moral concept is isn't a physical thing. I can't hold m good morality in in my hand and then bad morality in my other hand and go. Oh yeah, well here the good morality is is outweighed by by the bad morality and so that's how we and know. You can't things. find it in the refrigerator. Either. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> so it's right next to two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so so he's going to have to tell me that there's more to the universe than just matter. And he's going to have to appeal to something beyond the material cosmos. And this is a problem, right? Because all things are material. There's only matter in the universe. Well, un unless if there's more and, and uh, morality being one of them. Ultimately, he would have to appeal to the personal God of creation. But for our, our argument here, he has to go somewhere beyond the physical world to get to a moral absolute by which to condemn uh, 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 Bonson for trying to shoot him to win the debate. Every atheist you speak to is on the horns of that dilemma. Yeah, exactly. And so what he's been trying to show in this chapter, and he kind of, uh, this is the kind of the uh, end point of the chapter here, is that atheists cannot live consistently according to their world. They can hold it. They can you know, say they believe it, but they can't live it. That's what he's trying to say. He says when he was in college, it was during the last days of the counterculture of the Vietnam protests, the sexual revolution. It was the late 60s. He said he'd go onto a secular campus and try to witness and talk to people about the Christian faith. He'd run into you know, kind of this combination of ideas repeatedly and he says it would blow his mind. So what's the combination of ideas? Well, he says, I'd be talking with an unbeliever, let's say a guy who is living with his girlfriend. And I'd say, you know, how God condemns that and how that guilt needs to be dealt with and how Jesus Christ is the Savior and so forth. And he says, one way to uh, get me off of his back is for this guy to say, Different strokes for different folks, right? Moral relativism. This makes me happy. There are no absolutes. And so you can't apply that to me, right? It's, it's Morality is what I determine it is, right? right. Different strokes right. for different folks, right. right? So there, leave me alone. Let me do what I want to do. Right. And 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 so- It's okay oh, for okay. me to do what I want right. to do. Right. So, so yeah. okay, uh, uh, non-objective morality. Fine, let's go with that. But then he would say in the very same conversation that the person would say, the United States is unrighteous to be in Vietnam. We need to protest and burn down banks and do things to get them out of Vietnam because it's wrong. But how do you bring those two things together? It's different strokes for different folks. But when it comes to your, uh, when it comes to your sexual behavior, 
but not different strokes for different folks when it comes to military morale. You can't have it both ways. Exactly. Either one way or the other. So he says the materialistic atheist cannot do science anymore. That's what he's shown in this chapter. He cannot use logic anymore. He cannot presume that his mind or his brain is trustworthy, right? He cannot argue that we must be honest in our lab reports and we, you know, must do our own final exams, right? That <laughs> morally, you know, there's mor no morality there. Uh, so what happens when you point out these things, he says, when you destroy someone's worldview and show that, uh, you know, he can't even reason on the basis of it? Do they usually say that they get it? and declare that they need to become a Christian? Do they say, I'm guilty before God, I've been fighting against all of this? He says, sometimes that happens, right? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, hopefully we do see that, that type of change, but it's not gonna happen just because you've destroyed their worldview internally. So what's the next thing to do? Well, the next thing to do is to see, and this is where we'll uh, pick up in the next chapter, is that the unbeliever will say, that can't be true. I understand why you say theoretically that I can't do science, but I do science. And all my unbelieving friends do science. They make choices. They believe in morality. My best friend's a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> right. What you say looks good on paper, but it just isn't true. It's kind of like right. uh, communism. Communism looks great on paper. It, it definitely doesn't look great on paper either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the thing. Oh, it works well on paper. But, you know, once you put it out in the real world, then, you know, that, that, that's where the trouble is. And, and see, we have atheist mathematicians and, and uh, atheist uh, uh, moralists out there who are, are saying, uh, you know, do these things and not these other things. Well, but why? Where? Yeah. How, how, do we make, how do we make the determination? Uh, cause I, I come by and, uh, someone says, oh, you know, uh, giving, uh, uh, sex changing, uh, operations to, to six year olds is good. I say it's bad. What do we do? And bad yeah. and good in, in, in the sense of immoral, not, not just, oh, it's fine, uh, scientifically, but no morale. Yeah, right. Exactly.